life mix, what is it? It's notoriously difficult to explain because it's so many things. It's really basically a connection of the body to the, uh, to the ear, to music. So you hear music and you respond physically to it. And in the process of responding to what we hear, we learn. We learn about music, we learn about ourselves, we learn to interact with other people. We're creating, we're inventing, we're having to process what we're hearing uh, so that we, we develop a whole language, uh, an artistic language and a cognitive language of music. I got into Eurythmics at the age of 18, so I've really been doing it effectively all my life. I remember the light bulb that went off for me when I realized that a walking note was a quarter note. I mean, that sounds really dumb, but for me it was a revelation because I suddenly realized that all of this has something to do with me. And I could just climb right in and all of a sudden quarter notes and eighth notes, they all began to dance on the page for me in a totally new way. Instead of counting, I was feeling. And uh, that, that was just a revelation. This is a lesson in meter. In this exercise, I asked the students to step the beat and to show me the downbeat with some sort of gesture. I do change the meter because listening is at the heart of everything. The students don't know when I'm going to do that because I'm improvising. So you may see a time lag. There may be some students who haven't picked it up yet, but um, they, they hear that they're in a new measure. Music moves. It has to move or it isn't music. That's what you experience in a Eurythmics class. You're moving through space. You're, you're putting those experiences inside you to draw upon later when you're sitting still at a piano and you're making the music move because you know what it feels like to move. Beats aren't all the same. In fact, measures have shapes and that is determined by the energy of the beats themselves around a downbeat. So uh, my exercise was to place them in a bowling alley and have them experience what they would do to realize that preparation is the very first thing you do. And that is uh, certainly true of music. Not all music, but very often music has a preparation which is like an in-breath. And it leads to the downbeat. It's, it's, dynamic is a crescendo. It leads to the dynamic which we call the crucis, to the downbeat. You'll see as they bowl that they start with the anacrusis, which is the Greek word for preparation, then the crucis, which is the release of the energy, and then the metacrusis, which is the follow-through. Sports uh, illustrate this subject so beautifully. You cannot play a sport without that anacrusic backswing and without a release of energy and without a follow-through. But what is so important in this lesson is to be able to hear that. So the next exercise that you will see is an exercise of playing tennis in which they are trying to uh, coordinate their backswing and crucic swing. Uh, crucic release with 
music with a partner. So they're exchanging phrases. The students have never heard this little piece before. They're hearing it for the first time and they're responding with understanding to what they hear. Not all measures have all three energies. Sometimes you have a lot of anacrusic energy, and this is very exciting music, and there's no metacrusis until the very end. Sometimes music is very metacrusic, and it feels very, it can be associated with being sad or sleepy or uh, relaxed. Um, sometimes music is very crusic. Lots of martial music is very crucic. We find, um, you know, national anthems and things like that are very crucic because it's, it's a certain kind of strong energy, downbeat energy. The next exercise that you will see, we are now taking that same subject of feeling the anacrusis, being able to express it, and I'm asking them to take a step backward because the step back will give them the lift. It's like it's like this gesture. It's a step back and then a, a movement forward. this work because it is infinitely creative. You design exercises over a lifetime and they are constantly uh, new and fresh. I'm never bored. <laughs> I've, I, every group of students is new. They come in with something new and you deal with them in a different way and always inventing things. And I love it. It's a happy life. <laughs>